Welcome to part two of the learning, leadership, and professionalism topic. Our objectives for this lecture are to provide an introduction to the concept of personal information management, to learn to recognize our personal information behaviors, to discuss information strategies while highlighting a few sources, and finally to briefly review information management tools. Besides formal continuing education opportunities and certifications, public health nurses need to stay current in their field in less formalized ways. However, this can be overwhelming since we all know that the flow of information has been increasing for years and getting information is no longer the problem for most of us. The issue is finding the truly useful information in a river that may have already overflowed its banks. To complicate this problem, we find that the information sources and technologies that we use are often obsolete nearly as soon as we discover them. For this reason, the primary focus of this lecture will be on strategies to help us manage our approach to information and lifelong learning. In his book, Keeping Found Things Found, William Jones defined personal information management, or PIM, as finding, keeping, organizing, and maintaining information. He tells us that PIM is about managing the flow of information. While both inflow and outflow are important, today we will be focused on the inflow. One of the most important things to remember about personal information management is that it is very personal. What works for one person may not work for another and vice versa. Successful information management requires that you become aware of your personal style. In the article Variables for Personal Information Management Research, Berkman defines five categories that help shape how individuals approach information management. You can think of these categories as having a continuum from one approach to the opposite approach, with neither approach being a preferred behavior. To find out where you fit, ask yourself these types of questions. When you look around your physical space, do you see one large pile or lots of little piles? How do you name the physical or electronic files that you create? Do you prefer names that may be boring but anyone could recognize? Or do you like to use a name that is especially memorable but might not work for everyone? When you look at your computer, do you have lots of folders at the top level creating a wide structure? Or maybe your folders have subfolders with subfolders with subfolders creating a deep structure. Do you answer emails immediately or do you wait and come back to respond later? Do you rely heavily on memory? If so, do you remember the words associated with a file or what you were working on when you last used the file? Maybe you have a mental image of the file structure where you place the file. Do you find your existing files by navigating through your folders, or do you search for a file using its name? Do you need to access your information from any location, or only from your desk? Remember, there is no preferred behavior within these categories. You can be successful in your personal information management wherever you fall. Success comes from recognizing your behavior and finding the tools and strategies that fit your style. So now that we realize that successful personal information management starts by knowing ourselves and recognizing our own behavioral patterns, the next step is to think about the information, the river current that we are trying to control. We are constantly bombarded with information from small bits of it to large, complex, and hard to digest pieces, the challenge is to receive the useful while ignoring the clutter and to be able to return to the useful when we need it. In his book, Jones encourages you to think about what you can live without. Do you still need to be on all of those listservs? If not, take the time to unsubscribe. Are you deleting every message that comes in from a source? Perhaps you should block that source. Most of the time, however, we cannot fully turn off our devices or information channels. So if we can't turn the flow off, we need to filter it. Some of this filtering is simple. Activate spam filters, block pop-ups, and turn off email notifications. Think about setting up message filters for listservs, but only if you will actually go into the folder later to look at the messages. 
Another simple way to make use of filters is to look for pre-filtered sources, like news feeds, listservs, blogs, social media accounts, and podcasts from professional organizations and government agencies. By looking for these sources, you can avoid general health feeds from large media outlets that will contain lots of information clutter, like ads and irrelevant news items. Select sources that suit your learning style. For example, if you learn best by listening, choose podcasts. If reading is better for you, try a blog or pick out a newsletter. Some of our favorite websites include Partners in Information Access for the Public Health Workforce, or PH Partners, the Community Guide, and the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force. Do not forget to make use of sources of secondary literature, too. Systematic reviews, meta-analyses, and practice guidelines have all undergone a rigorous filter process which involves gathering, evaluating, and combining the best evidence available. Many of our favorite free information resources have RSS feeds, updates, and newsletters that will let you know when new literature has been published. And of course, remember to visit the Next Portal's Learning, Leadership, and Professionalism page to find the most up-to-date information on a variety of sources of the latest news in public health. You can also choose to follow a particular journal that covers your area of interest or that publishes pre-filtered articles, like evidence-based nursing, for example. Most journals will offer a table of contents alert service. You can create your own news feeds or search alerts in PubMed by clicking on the Create RSS button or the Create Alert button under the search box and following the instructions. These buttons will create your feeds based on the search that you just did. Either alert service will only send you newly published citations that fit your search parameters. It is important to periodically assess your sources and strategies for controlling the inflow of information. Perhaps you have a subscription to a news feed but have found its relevance declining in recent months. You should consider dropping the feed and finding a different source. New sources of information are always being developed and technologies evolve, not to mention the fact that there is a lot of money being spent to make sure that you see advertisements and other distractions. A little investment each month assessing and adjusting your information strategy will save you time and keep you seeing the information that you want and need to see. Try asking yourself, what am I deleting without reading? What do I feel like I'm missing? What nonsense is getting through? What would make my personal information space better? Personal information management is a real challenge, but it can be made a lot easier with the right tools. Fortunately, there is an entire field of study and industry devoted to understanding how we manage information and creating tools to help us. However, as we discussed earlier, there is no correct behavior, and therefore, there is no correct tool. Just as with each of the other aspects of personal information management, the challenge is finding what works for you. Most of these tools are about creating your personal space of information, the one place that you go to retrieve your information. You can use one tool or several, but the more tools that you use, the more complicated information retrieval becomes. Realistically, most of us will use two to five tools regularly. To begin with, there are a few tools that almost everyone is already using. Many of us use our email accounts to gather and store information. People that choose to make email their primary personal information space frequently send themselves email as a way of storing information and documents for later retrieval. Another tool that most of us use to some extent is our computer's hard drive. Or perhaps because we need to have access to our information from anywhere, we use a jump drive. Or we use cloud storage that can be shared with colleagues. Some people expand this use to include storing copies of email or lists of hyperlinks. Many people choose to use feed readers or social media tools as their primary tool to collect information. While these are great tools, they do generally limit you to one type of information source. For example, feed readers are great for reading multiple feeds, but do not provide access to email. 
a popular tool that allows you to incorporate multiple sources of information into one space is the personal portal. These tools are also called dashboards or start pages, and they are designed specifically to be used as your personal information space. They bring together sources of information and your personal accounts. The end result is one page that provides access to your email, your social media accounts, news feeds, cloud storage, bookmarks, and more. Portals are a good solution for many users, and they do tend to be free to use. PIM is a rapidly growing and changing industry, and there are an overwhelming number of tools. So how do you decide which tool is right for you? One reviewer reminds us again that it is all very personal. When he states that, it's hard to pick an outright winner, if only because different users have different ideas as to what makes an ideal homepage. So read reviews and explore the options to find out what works best for you. We have provided a list of some of your options on the Learning, Leadership, and Professionalism page in the next portal. In summary, successful personal information management requires that you recognize your personal behaviors and pick strategies and tools that complement your profile. Success is also dependent on our ability to assess our success and per periodically adjust. The world of information is vast and ever-changing, and if we do not make the effort to take control of the inflow, outside forces will. Remember that there are lots of strategies and tools to help us so that with a little regular effort, we can keep in the current without being overwhelmed. Thank you for viewing the Learning Leadership and Professionalism Lectures. We used these sources. This project has been funded in whole or in part with federal funds from the National Library of Medicine, National Institutes of Health, Department of Health and Human Services, under grant number 1UG4LMO1231246, with the University of Iowa.